Hey, good morning. It's about 4.30 in the morning and I've got a great view of Saturn going and I thought I might settle a question that I have in my own mind and that is how good of a picture you can take with a cell phone through your telescope versus through a dedicated astrophotography camera. I get this question every once in a while. People say, well, I'm just starting out. I'm just gonna use my cell phone camera with a mount and take my pictures that way versus investing in a dedicated camera. And so I've never tried it before uh, with, the, with the cell phone camera, but that's what I'm gonna try today is see if I can post-process and massage those uh, pictures I get out of my cell phone enough to make them look respectable or even comparable to the dedicated astrophotography camera. So let's get going. I'm gonna start here by taking some pictures with the dedicated camera because I've already got it set up and I've got pretty good focus. So let's get a couple shots here and then we'll put the cell phone mount on and we'll give that a shot. So let's do this. So for the pictures with the dedicated camera, I'm gonna take uh, shots at 15 milliseconds per exposure and I'm going to take 3,000 of them. I don't know that I'm going to have that same control with the cell phone but there's no reason that I need to handicap myself with this camera because we're trying to do a uh, comparison here. So let's get this capture going. 3,000 pictures. I've got a uh, 2x Barlow in place just to make Saturn a little bit bigger. I don't want to spend too much time capturing these pictures because the seeing is supposed to deteriorate a little bit in the next hour or so. Almost right on schedule, I can see that seeing start to deteriorate just a little bit. So let's get that cell phone mount on and get some shots quick. Okay, I will acknowledge that I have never used this cell phone mount before. So there's gonna be a little bit of a learning curve. I'll try to just edit this out as much as I can. Uh, but first thing I'm gonna do is take this uh, astral camera off. So what I'm going to do is put this uh, star diagonal in here so that I can uh, see the cell phone a little bit easier. And I've got a, I think it's a 32 millimeter eyepiece in here right now. I don't have a lot of, I don't have any good eyepieces. So uh, this is, this one has the widest field of view for me uh, to be able to get that picture with my cell phone. I have Saturn centered and I gotta tell you guys, this is the first time I've visually looked through this 9.25 scope. It is gorgeous through here. It is amazing. Okay, well, let me see if I can share that with you guys uh, with the cell phone mount. Okay, that was super frustrating. I had to do a meridian flip because I think I hit the 180 degree point. Uh, I could no longer track Saturn. So uh, just flip the meridian on the scope and uh, we'll pick this up where we left off. Kind of get readjusted here for the new viewing spot. Okay, that was pretty quick and easy. I've got it in my viewfinder. Uh, let me get that cell phone mount on there now. Okay, I actually think I got it in the viewfinder. This is crazy, uh, but it is super dim. So let me try to increase the exposure here. Wow, 1 30th of a second is as low as I can go. And ISO 1600. Okay, I can go a little higher on that. So we'll go 3200. Let me just adjust where it is in the viewfinder. I think that's about as good as I can do now. Let me see if maybe I can reduce the exposure a little bit. Maybe one fiftieth of a second. Okay, I'm gonna try with that, but I need to get this focus better. I just can't figure out if the focus is, like if that's as good as I can get, or if I need to keep playing with it. I might not be able to do any better than this. Let me just go ahead and grab some pictures. All right, so it's collecting 60 frames a second. So let's do like 20 seconds. That'll give me 1200 frames. 
I can see some ring details there. It's not horrible. I'm gonna go ahead and take another shot here. All right, that one looks pretty good. We're gonna get, uh, maybe I'll get a full 30 seconds on this guy. Okay, we're doing one more here with uh, no additional zoom, just the optical 5X zoom with the Samsung S24. Okay, I think I've seen what I need to see there. Here's one of the raw captures with the smartphone, and it's not too bad, but one of the main issues I think that I have here is that you can only capture an MP4 format. And so I think I'm getting hit by the compression that's hurting resolution. I ended up taking seven pictures with the smartphone, stacking anywhere from one to 3,000 pictures for each one. Uh, what I found is that the tools that I use for post-processing, they were just introducing a lot of strange artifacts, which made several of the pictures completely unusable. Uh, I did get a couple of decent ones though. Uh, this is probably the best one right here. You can clearly see the rings, but there's no banding on the planet itself. Uh, although to be fair, I'm not sure I was able to see the banding through the eyepiece uh, you know, by itself when I was looking just with my eye. I think if I wanted to spend more time to refine the smartphone technique and settings a bit, I could probably improve the quality just marginally, but it's just simply not worth the time. I would say the real deal breaker here was the setup time. Uh, trying to get that eyepiece lined up with the camera was very difficult and just not worth the time. It took over 20 minutes for me to do it. I don't think I could do it much faster unless I got really lucky. I think the quality of the pictures that I got from the smartphone are something you might be able to impress a few friends with on Facebook, but not much beyond that. Uh, my mind is made up out of this test. Uh, anytime anybody asks me about using a smartphone uh, for their astrophotography, I'm definitely gonna be steering them uh, towards a dedicated astrophotography camera. It is for certain worth the several hundred dollars that that would cost. So thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you next time.